Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial of PostgreSQL. In the last tutorial, we learned about the check constraint, and this tutorial will continue with the not null and the unique constraint. So, not null constraint is basically used to uh, indicate fields that uh, cannot be empty or cannot be null. So, I will be indicating or I will be showing that uh, with the help of an example. So, first of all, I will be creating the products table again that we created in the last tutorial. So, you could just use it. Uh, create table products and uh, we have a product number that is of uh, integer type and it is not null so this constraint here means that this cannot be empty that I will show you in a while and we have a name that is a text type and it will be not null so since we learned the check constraint last time I could tell you that uh, the check constraint can be applied with the not null constraint so suppose I have a price which I want that uh, it should uh, not be null so you could just write uh, not null first of all and then you could write check price should be greater than zero so this will ensure that the price is first of all not null and then it would check that the price is greater than zero so you could just execute this and you see that the table is successfully created so next I will be inserting values in the table insert into uh, products values so suppose I enter 12 for the product number then I insert null for the name and then I insert minus 6 minus 5 for the price so you would see that uh, I have an error that is null value in column name that violates the check constraint and I will enter a name that is uh, soap so you would see that uh, it will again give me an error that is uh, check constraint is being violated that is negative so this is all for the see not null and you could see how it works so the next thing that we are going to learn about is the unique constraint. Unique constraint basically ensures that each and every field in our uh, table is a unique one or no value is uh, replicated. So uh, I, for that I will be creating the table products again so that you could understand it better and you could create it with me. So uh, you could just delete this table first of all and then I will be creating this table again to create table product and uh, could write the uh, product number that is of uh, integer type and we will declare it as unique so unique here indicates that uh, no value can be repeated for product number next we will be writing that name that is of text type and we will write the price that is of numeric type so this was one method in which you could declare a unique constraint the next method I will tell you is you could just write unique here and declare the product number and name so you won't need unique here so this is the second method that you could declare a unique field in your table so now when you would run this you could see that uh, it returns successfully and now I will be entering values again first of all I will be entering duplicate values to show so insert into product values that is 3 and uh, plate and 100 so this would insert successfully you could see that uh, it has returned successfully next if I use uh, 4 and I keep the plate same you would see I will get an error that is duplicate key entry while it's unique constraint so see this gives me an error so this is unique so you will write knife here and you will see that this returns successfully because it has changed so thank you for watching this tutorial in the next tutorial we'll be talking about primary keys so subscribe for more and stay tuned